I have to imagine when somebody comes and gets fit with either a cross or a bi cross, not to be confused with a double cross, okay? <laughs> their, their first complaint, or at least thing out of their mouth, is it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's got to be overwhelming. Welcome to the Ask an Audiologist podcast, real audiology white papers written by real audiologists and explained to you by a real audiologist and a guy who isn't. Now here are your hosts, Dr. Jordan Strong and Kevin Zener. We are back with another brand new episode of Ask an Audiologist. I'm Kevin Zener. And I'm Dr. Jordan. Today, we are going to be talking about a type, a style of hearing aid, not to be confused with the last time Dr. Jordan was here where we were talking about a specific brand, like the Lyric. Instead, we're going to be talking about not a cross, A-C-R-O-S-S, or about a space cross, C-R-O-S, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Okay, but before we get to that, uh, I'm super self-conscious with this shirt. Is this a weird shirt to be wearing? No. Okay. Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, there's probably a lot of reasons to not be wearing this shirt. One of which is it's every color of the rainbow, quite literally. I'm looking at myself in the monitor <laughs> and it's still TBD as to whether or not I regret wearing what looks like Willy Wonka wears to bed. Eh, fair. It, <laughs> it's it, fun though. I like it. It's like somebody reached up into a rainbow and said, let me make that a sure. casual shirt. Yeah for a guy who may or may not have style. Okay, I just need to address it. I just need to get that off of my chest. I like it. It's colorful. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You can hear the hesitation in her voice. You can hear... I mean, we've we've seen the beige shirt. That's true. Last time I... Okay, here's a, it's a step up. At least you know I'm wearing clothes. There you go. The beige shirt, I might have just been a nippleless weird guy doing a podcast with another guy. <laughs> this, at least you know I'm wearing something... Though it's debatable as to whether or not I should be wearing it. Okay, neither here nor there. <laughs> we do recommend that you wear, wear all your hearing aid technology if it has been prescribed to you. But in particular, let's talk about that technology before you become a wearer of it. Okay, so we had talked about, uh, in a previous podcast, we talked about Lyric and all the good things and fun things that it does. But talking about a more traditional style type, what would we call it? It's a style. Okay. Yeah. Of hearing aid. Type. I don't know. <laughs> the cross, C R O S, is, would you say, one of the more ubiquitous types, styles of hearing aids? Sure. Okay. So, what is, first off, I, I, I use this word a lot in, in, in my career, though. I don't necessarily know what it is. Does cross stand for something? It does. Oh, okay. It Hit does. us with that acronym. <laughs> yeah. It uh, it's actually stands for a contralateral routing of signal. That's easier than cross. Yes. So <laughs> firmly understand why we call it a cross now yeah. and explain to us in stupid dumb brain terms what that means. Sure. So and just put it very simply. Yes. Essentially, as simple as for, possible. For, for, some, for the people who would wear this type of device, it looks like a typical hearing aid on both sides. Okay. However, for this, uh, for this person, they would basically have one ear that is very poor okay. and one ear that is a very good ear or maybe has some hearing loss, but not as bad as the, the poor ear. So, right? so we've got a good ear to poor ear. So if we focus on that, is that typically when, you know, I think of like hearing loss is if I'm losing my hearing, I'm losing it gradually equally Correct. on both sides yeah, of my most head. Most people, yes. Okay. Yeah. So typically yeah. if I'm, if you're going to prescribe a cross to somebody, is it because They've had a, like a profound life event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Most of them, they've had like a, a viral infection that's attacked the hearing nerve or like a Got head it. trauma, something of that sort um, that's caused this. And they have one ear that's uh, what we consider is um, uh, unaidable okay. or um, not a very good treatment option to aid that ear. Because essentially what can happen is like, even if the person has a little bit of hearing loss, yes, it's kind of like if you've ever heard like a broken speaker and you turn a broken speaker up, does it make it more clear? It makes it more garbled. I just had this happen with some of my earbuds. See? One worked perfectly fine. The other speaker clearly blew out. And so you're like, well, I'll just turn it down and it'll be fine. And then you're mm -hmm. like, well, that's, I can't even hear it. What's the point? And then you right. turn it up and you just hear that, yeah. that me almost metallic yeah. reverberation. Right. And that's essentially what that hearing nerve is hearing Okay, when... 
there's that much damage done to the nerve. So it's better to have just the better ear hearing. Okay. But what we don't want to lose is that that if someone comes up to the person on their poor ear side, we still want them to be able to hear that conversation. So that's where a cross comes in. So we have a device called a cross where essentially it looks just like two hearing aids. They look the same, Mm -hmm. but one side is what we call the transmitter. So it's a microphone. Um, It picks up the sound from that side of the head, but it just transmits it to the other side, to the better ear, to the better, um, to the hearing aid on the better side so that that person can still hear somebody coming up to them on their poor. So I, I would say the the logical question that most people probably have is if the ear itself is unaidable, why are we even putting something in there if yeah. its main goal is to just transfer Correct. the sound to the other ear or mm-hmm. Across to the other ear. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Thank right. You. Yep. Um, yeah, because we still we want to be able to hear. You know, if you're if you're driving mm-hmm. and your poor ear is on your right side, then if somebody's sitting in the passenger seat, you're not you're not going to understand them very well because of what's called the head shadow effect. Because that sound has to travel to the other side of Correct. your head, and those those frequencies, those consonants, that clarity is lost whenever that happens. Okay. So to prevent them from having to turn all the way around to be able to see and hear that person with their better ear. This way, the microphone is picking that person up, but they're actually hearing it in their better ear. So are we, so say it's my right ear that is unaidable. Mm-hmm. Are we essentially asking the left ear to do double duty? Uh, yeah. Essentially. Okay. Yeah. 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 We're, it, we're turning it into a bit of a superpower. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And so then not, not that you're, we're going to get into neuroscience here, <laughs> but then is your brain, capable of differentiating what direction the noise came from or does it even matter? So that's a good question. And I think Thank honestly it, it varies by person and it varies with time. Okay. You know, that's something that especially for somebody who hasn't had the hearing on that side for some for a long time. Most of them it's been a very long time. Yeah. Then it it's gonna take some time to kind of differentiate what sounds like it's coming at mm-hmm. you from your better side and what's coming at you from the microphone, if Got that it. makes sense. Sure. And some people may be able to differentiate that and some people may not. And, and I guess yeah. there's context clues, meaning yeah, like absolutely. if I'm walking on the, on, on the side of the road and the road is to my right, mm-hmm. chances are I'm going to know that if I hear any car type, right. it's going to be coming from that side. Mm-hmm. So, so we're letting also just like common sense yeah. run amok right, too. Right. Um, Typically, when 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 someone is fit with a cross, what is the? Because again, we're not we're not actually treating the ear that would need it, right? right. Yeah. So, what does the other device in the healthy or the, yeah. the aidable ear look like? Because it probably doesn't need to be as powerful, I would imagine, if if it's a normal right. hearing. Yeah. So there's there's what's called a cross, mm-hmm. C R O S, and then there's a bi cross. Oh, okay. So cross means that it is just a receiver kind of on the other side, but it looks just like a hearing aid. It looks just like the other hearing aids that are out there. Sure. Um, both ears would look no different. But if it's a bicross, that means that that ear, the better ear, mm-hmm. still has some loss that needs to be treated. Okay. So um, on that side, it would be a traditional hearing aid, but it's also capable of receiving the transmitter side. That, that's sending it over to the opposite So ear. the bicross is then doing double duty for right. the ear that is doing double duty yeah. because that ear also has a level of hearing loss. Correct. Yeah. <sighs> it's a lot. It's that's a lot. A lot. That is, <laughs> I have to imagine when somebody comes and gets fit with either a cross or a bicross, not to be confused with a double cross, okay? <laughs> their, their first complaint or at least thing out of their mouth is it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's got to be overwhelming. Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. I mean, I really think that the brain is so adept to picking up on things like that of, I'm, you just hear now, you know, it it doesn't, we want, we want you to just have access to sound in general. Um, and honestly, most of them are just so appreciative to be able to sit, you know, at a restaurant and not have to think about, it. I need to make sure that everybody's sitting, sitting on my, my better side. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I think it's kind of freeing for most patients. I, I mean, I, it would be such a surreal moment to think that even though there is no treatment for the ear that, that, that would need it, mm-hmm. you can still 
utilize it Mm -hmm. and its positioning to Correct. once again hear the world around yeah, you. That's a good way to put it. I like that. It's pretty, you can. There you that's, go. You're that's trademark. I'll, I'll license it to you, but that's <laughs> yours. Uh, well, if you have more questions about cross, not a cross, but a cross, but not a, a, a cross, or a by cross, feel free to head on over to asknaudiologist.com. And of course, please seek advice from your own hearing care professional. And Dr. Jordan, Thank you, as always. Absolutely. And I appreciate your semi-kind words <laughs> about this very loud, very over-the-top top that was worn it today. Was fun. You only made me feel somewhat bad about wearing. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. You can find more information at askanaudiologist.com. And you can follow us on all our social channels at Ask an Audiologist. The information provided on this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and does not substitute for professional medical advice.